welcome back for part two of our endangered gorilla project. In the first part, we made our background using repetition and balance with our triangles and lines. Today, we're going to be working on our gorilla and putting it all together. So you will need red construction paper for this next step. If you don't have red construction paper, you can take white paper and color it red. I'm using 12 by 18 inches because that's the size paper I have in the art room. It's kind of a big size. So if you don't have 12 by 18, you can do a smaller one. I'll later on be using a nine by 12 inch sheet of yellow construction paper, but I don't need that right now. I do need my black oil pastels. One pastel, sorry, one black oil pastel. If you don't have an oil pastel, you can use a crayon. Later, you will be needing scissors and glue. I'm using a glue stick. You can use liquid glue, but just be careful because sometimes it can kind of squirt and ooze out the sides. Then you have a sticky mess. All right. How about let's go ahead and do a camera switch so you can see what I'm going to show you. We're going to be drawing the gorilla step by step. So remember, if you need me to slow down, you can always pause the video and replay parts if there is something you need to see again. All right, if you haven't already gotten your things, go ahead and get them while I switch out the cameras. All right, I have my red paper ready and my black oil pastel. Remember, this is a fun art project that I found on the website Deep Space Sparkle. And what's great about it is there are drawing guides that show you step by step how to make this picture. So I will be using the drawing guide while I draw and you follow along. I think I'm going to push up my sleeves here since I'm using black. Okay, let me make sure all my little crayon crumblies are off. There we go. Okay, step one. You want to make sure that your paper is turned up and down tall vertically like this. Now, near the bottom, not at the very bottom edge, but near the bottom, you will be drawing two long upside down U shapes like this. So they're upside down. Leave some space between them. The top of the letter U should be somewhere near the middle of the page going up. That's my entire sheet right there. Two letter U's. Now we're going to close them off by adding some wavy curved lines like that. Now we're going to draw another upside down letter U to connect the first two. And you're gonna see that it looks a little bit bigger, <laughs> quite a bit bigger than the others. Hmm. Now, this part, doesn't look like a gorilla yet, but it will. This is going to be the gorilla's head. And these two things here are going to be the gorilla's arms. Now let's go to the bottom of the arms and we're going to draw two straight vertical, that means up and down lines that go all the way to the bottom edge of your paper, just like this right here. 
Still doesn't look like a gorilla, does it? I don't think so either. But don't worry, there's more. You just have to be patient. Okay, now we're going to add some short vertical lines. And that's going to add texture to our gorilla. Remember, texture is how something feels or how it looks like it would feel. We can't actually touch and feel the gorilla, certainly. This is a drawing. So we have to make it look like how a gorilla might feel. So let's give it some texture by adding several vertical lines on the head. I'm not going to do it all over the entire thing. Almost reminds me of a cactus. Okay, I think that's enough. Now we're going to draw some bumpy lines right here. This is going to be the gorilla's chest. So let's just kind of give it a few little bumpy lines here and there. Like that, you don't need a whole lot. Okay, guess what? That's all you're gonna do with the red paper. Let's put it out of the way for right now and swap out and get our yellow paper instead. Now this time I'm going to turn my yellow paper horizontally because I'm going to need to have plenty of space to draw the face as well as the hands. Yes, not the feet, the hands. So here's what we are going to draw. We're going to start out by drawing the face shape. And I don't really know how to describe it other than just watch what I'm drawing. I'm gonna put it near the top of the paper, but I don't want to fill up the whole entire paper. It's similar to a heart shape, but it doesn't have pointy sharp corners. Oops. You know what? <laughs> That's looking more like a deformed jelly bean. Hey, you know what? In the words of my favorite TV artist, it's not a mistake, it's a happy accident. Okay, so here's our gorilla heart shape thing. <laughs> heart shape thing, face thing. Oh my. Oh my goodness, goodness gracious. I hope nobody's giving me a grade on how I draw gorillas. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. If you need a little bit of help to figure for you to figure out about how big you should make it, you should probably be able to fit, this is if you're a student, you should probably be able to fit your hand inside the head shape. Now, I'm an adult, so my hand is bigger than the gorilla's head shape. If you really messed up and you wanted to draw it on this side, you could. You know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I want to draw an X through the one that I don't want to use. And I'm going to try it again over here. But again, my, my hand is much bigger than yours. So I'm going to just try this. Again, but maybe make it a little bit bigger. So similar to a heart, but not pointy. Okay, I definitely like the way that looks better than that one. That one, mm, okay. But you know what? Now that I drew an X through it, I will know that's not the one I'm going to use. Okay, now let's go to the bottom of the paper. And we're going to draw two vertical lines. Like this. That's going to mark the spot for one hand. And then we're going to do it over here. Again, one, two, four. Now let's make four bumps to represent the knuckles. One, two, three, four. I know they look funny, but <laughs> one, two, three, four. This is not going to be a totally realistic Gorilla, it's kind of a cartoony one. 
All righty. Now, let's give our gorilla a face. So we're going to start by adding dots for the eyes. And we'll add two little straight lines between those two dots. That will be part of his nose. Then we'll put a forward, or her nose, I'm not sure. Then we're gonna put a forward C and a backward C. And then two little diagonal lines, a short little straight vertical line. And then let's give it a smile. And gorillas have wrinkly foreheads. So let's give him or her a few little wrinkly lines up here for the head. Okay, now we have this. How does that look? I like the way that looks, don't you? I think we're ready to get our scissors out at this point. Let me go ahead and cut. I'm not going to cut on the black. I think it's kind of interesting to see a little bit of that black showing. I also like to turn my paper like a steering wheel when I cut. It makes things a little easier. You could also do what I call a bubble cut, which means you go and you kind of leave, leave a bubble around it like that. And then you can go back and get the smaller spots in that way. Okay, so we have the two gorilla hands. Now, cut out the face. hang on to my extra yellow paper. You know, you never know. You, you could make a mistake. So you just never know these things. All right, so here's my gorilla and the hands. Now I need to get my red sheet. Now let's see how this is going to look when we put it all together. Oh, there we go. There's the gorilla's face. What about the hands? Oh my, well, Lucky for me, I drew them the right size. So let me show you what we can do at this point here. There are a couple things you could do with the hands, depending on what you feel comfortable with. You could take a glue stick, glue them, and stick them right on there the way they are. And that would be okay. It kind of looks like kind of looks like he's wearing yellow rubber gloves like when you wash dishes. But if you want the furry red part to show up, let me show you this little trick that you can do. You can cut from the bottom and then you can cut in along the line like this and go up part of the way. See like what I've just drawn there, part of that side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, now watch what, now watch what I can do. I can take that hand, I can lift this up and I can slide that in. Oh my goodness, <laughs> do you see what I did? I made the hand too big for its body. Oh no, that's okay. Happy accidents, we can trim it down. No big deal, no problemo. Let me go ahead and cut out the rest of my gorilla and then we will tackle those wacky hands in just a moment. Okay, let's try, let's try this hand. Maybe I don't have to draw, redraw both of them. 
Okay, that's a pretty good fit right there. And so is that one. Okay, so that means that I only have to redo one of the hands this on the side here. Because the hands are about the same. So let me go ahead and just sort of figure out how much I need to take off. Ah, I'm just going to trim a little bit off the edges. Okay, let's see. Did that make a difference? Oh, still needs to be just a little bit smaller. Let's try it again. How is that? Oh, so close. I want to snip it one more time. Okay, let's see. How, how does that one look? Does that fit? Bingo. See, that fits fine. Where'd its face go? There's the face. Okay. Let's go ahead and glue our gorilla parts to the background. I will keep the face and the hands over here. I'll have the body handy. Now I need to get my blue paper. Okay. This is going to look pretty awesome. You can decide how you want you to pay, how to turn your paper, but I'm going to turn it vertically. That's what I will do. Okay, now let me make sure that I have things on here the way I want them to be. Gorillas near the bottom, I wanna leave enough space for his knuckles on his hands to show and put it down toward the bottom of the paper. You know what, I might have to actually, I'm looking at mine, I might have to cut off some of my gorilla. That's okay, let me get, let me just kind of set things the way, let's see, that looks nice, I like that. But if I leave it like that, he looks like he's standing up like a person and instead of walking on his knuckles, like you usually see them do. So what I wanna do, before I glue this to the whole blue background, I wanna glue the gorilla parts together first. So let me go ahead and put some glue on the gorilla's face like this. Stick that on there. If you're using oil pastels like I am, like I did, Remember, they're very dirty and they smudge a lot. So be careful that you don't smudge or rub your paper because you'll smear it and it will look weird. Okay, now let's try gluing our little guy on here. The knuckles, I'll put some glue on the back, on the back of the hand. Lift up the little part here, the end of his arm, and just kind of tuck it inside like that. Oh, and you know what? I can even take the glue and pull a little bit underneath the edge of the arm. There we go. Okay. Let me do the same thing with this one. You don't need to glue the entire thing down just yet. Just enough that it kind of stays put like that. There we go. Okay, press that down. Put some up here. Press that down. Okay, now I'm ready to lift him up and place it toward the bottom. Oh, hand. Boy, the happy accidents are loving me today with this project. I don't think I put enough glue down. There we go. Do I have to perform glue surgery on you, Gorilla? Well, yes, I do believe I do. All right, let's flip them, flip it over. I'll put glue all over my gorilla. Including the hands. Okay, now. Oh, 
I'll scoot it down so that his knuckles are pretty close to the bottom edge of the page. Oh, you know what I did? Oh, see, do as I say, not as I do. Look, I got black stuff smeared all over my white. Oh no, it's okay though. It's not the end of the world. So if I were doing this again, I would have a larger work area and I would flip this over and put glue on the back. I mean, glue it with not the good paper underneath it. I should have had a messy mat nearby. Miss Meadows made a mistake. That's okay. Accidents happen. It's not the end of the world. It's a happy accident. Okay. Paul, hand, whatever you call it. <laughs> Get in there. Stay there. Okay. Now we have this extra part. So well, we could do a couple of things with the extra part that's hanging off the bottom edge of the paper. You could take scissors and trim it, or you could just flip the entire paper over. Rub some glue along that little extra part and fold it. And that's it, fold it down. Okay, that is our gorilla. Our gorilla friend certainly managed to present his own challenges today. I made a lot of mistakes with this project and you might have too, I don't know. But remember, it's, it's a happy accident in the words of my favorite TV artist. And I certainly made a lot of happy accidents today. You wanna know a secret? This is the first time I have ever made this gorilla. And it's probably the first time you ever have too, unless you've seen this website and have tried it before now on your own. Um, but it's been fun. Are there things that I could have done differently that I could do differently the next time? Yes, I could put a messy mat down. I could be more careful with my drawing, slow down, take my time. But you know what? It's okay. I don't like to say practice makes perfect. I like to say practice makes better at doing because we are always learning, growing, and improving. And that's what I like about art because there's really no wrong way to do art. Well, actually there could be, there would be. And that would be if you just gave up. I could have given up, but I didn't. I kept plugging away at it. And now I have this awesome creation to hang on my wall to remind me of how important it is to protect our endangered species and our environment. Because remember, we only have one earth and it's our job to be good stewards of it and take care of it as well as the living creatures that share our planet with us. I hope you enjoy this project. I cannot wait to see what you made. So until we can get together again, remember, stay artsy.